Today I'm going to be speaking from the topic of something's moving, or actually something has to break, is the title of this sermon. I didn't actually change that on the screen. Something has to break. We are in our altar by the altar series. We are being altered by the altar. And the title of my message today is Something Has to Break. Something Has to Break. We have, we have a house full of sick people this morning. We have a house full of sick people in the sanctuary, but we are faithful. And so we are so thankful that everyone is here this morning just fulfilling the call of God on their lives. But I know that we are all being stretched just about as, as far as we can be stretched this morning because something has to break. So this is a timely message for us. We have other people that are sick and in the hospital. We have some that are recovering. We have some that are there and in the ER. So tonight we are canceling service. I just want to let everybody know that there will not be a 6 p.m. service tonight. But the other thing that I want to do is I want to go to the, uh, to the Lord in prayer this morning, specifically for um, this service, particularly for this message and for the needs of the house. Heavenly Father, I thank you today. I thank you for the word that you've given. I know that when you created this word that it was timely and you knew that every uh, situation that we were going to have, you knew every need that was going to come about between the time that this was created and now. And Lord, I just pray right now that you would help me deliver it. Help me to deliver it. Set aside all of my flesh, whether it being sick, give me the vocal strength that I need to, to push through to deliver your word successfully today, Lord. And I just pray, God, that in this moment, your people would hear, hear your, your move, your word come forth boldly, and that they would be able to declare and decree uh, change in their lives, that they would be able to declare and decree breaking, taking forth in their lives because we are being altered at the altar. Lord, I speak to every person that is under the sound of my voice that is sick in body, whether it be physically, emotionally, Lord, I just speak peace to that storm that they're going through. I pray, God, that you will go in and heal every single need, Lord. I pray, God, that you will uh, do a work in kidneys today, that you will do a work in central nervous systems today. We speak to uh, infirmity in the body, Lord, and we say that it is healed in the name of Jesus. We speak to those that are recovering from surgery today, and we say be healed in the name of Jesus. That, God, you are restoring things in our bodies. You are restoring things in our homes. And we know that we have breakthrough coming. We know that 2023, the rest of 2023, is going to be one blessing after another, after another, after another. We've been declaring that. We've been decreeing that. And, Lord, we are walking boldly into it. And we know that right now something has to break. Something has to break. So come into this moment, Lord, and break us. Do anything that you need to get us to where we need to be to get us to that promise this morning. In the name of Jesus, we say amen. Amen. There's two uh, scriptures that I want to go to to start off my message this morning. Something has to break. Exodus 24, verse 17. Exodus 24, verses, verse 17. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. And then I want you to go to uh, Zechariah 2 and 5. The Lord himself shall be a wall of fire around us and guard the glory within. The Lord himself shall be a wall of fire around us and the guard uh, and guard the glory within and guard the glory within. You know, when I'm looking at that verse, it reminds me of a brazen altar. You know, we've been talking about the altar and we've talking, been talking about putting things on the altar. We have something, we have something, but we want our everything. The Lord has promised us something. And we don't have it yet. And so, Lord, I'm taking what I have. I'm taking what I have. 
and I'm putting it on the altar, and I'm trusting you that you're bringing me my everything. And when we do that, when we go through that act of surrender, that act of sacrifice, when we're putting things on the altar, the Lord completely surrounds us with that wall of fire, and he guards us. The glory comes down in that moment, and it surrounds us, and we feel his presence. You know, there's an element of glory that you can go through. You begin praising the Lord. You begin telling the Lord, Lord, I love you. I love you because you are my Savior. You are my soon-coming King. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. But it comes into, it goes into an act of worship. Lord, I just love you because you're you. I, if you take everything away from me, if you never do another thing for me, I still love you. You don't have to do anything else. Just give me your presence. Stay here with me in this place and give me your presence. And in that very moment from, from praise to worship, you experience the glory of the Lord coming in, into that moment in a, such a mighty way. And that's where we're going today. We are going to get to that place of glory where we are just carriers of his glory. That there is a praise, there is a worship, there is a glory that we can enter into. And that glory, we're going to carry it. So that when we go into dark places, when we go into uh, worldly places, when we go into government buildings, when we go into school systems, when we go into the grocery store, and everybody around us, around us seems dark. They are doing all sorts of things. They are arguing with one another. They're fighting with one another. You are you you in a in a um, in a different setting. You would be scared. You would be scared. But you have the glory, and you know that the Lord is on your side, and you know that you are carrying the glory. So in that moment, the darkness doesn't even bother you because you know that you are the light in the room, and that light comes from that light comes from. The Lord. It comes from Christ. It comes from being a carrier of the glory. It comes from being a carrier of the light. So during this series, we've talked about sin. We've talked about how sin can bring all sorts of problems with it. That sin can bring chaos and it can bring confusion. It can bring all sorts of calamity and conflict and curses come through it. And the biggest curse, I think, the biggest curse that comes from sin is when you're afraid to move. You're completely contained. You're held in a box. You know that the Lord wants you to move. You know that the Lord has spoken to you. You know that the Lord has softened your heart, but you're still there refusing to move because you are contained by the sin that you don't want to give up. You are contained. You are contained and you are cursed with that sin. So you're there stuck unchangeable until you decide to move towards God and to surrender to him and to give him your heart fully and totally. Sometimes if we don't watch, we'll think that there's sin somewhere in our lives when trouble comes. Sometimes there isn't sin there. Sometimes the trouble comes because the Lord is taking us someplace in it. We all face struggles. We all face heartaches. We all face problems. We all are broken at different times in our lives. There's a breaking that comes. It's not just one time that you're broken. It's time and time again. I'm thankful that the Lord allows healing between the breaking because if we were broken continuously, we would just be shattered from, from shattered and put back together time and time again. But I'm thankful that he uses us when he puts us back together and that there's a time before we become shattered again. But that breaking takes us something, it takes us someplace. And each time, each time we're broken, each time that we're broken, he puts us back better, he puts us back stronger, he puts us back more anointed, he puts us back with more glory. And that breaking comes so that he can use us, so that we can boldly declare that Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. No matter how discouraged we get, no matter how we feel like life is completely against us. You know, have you ever had those times where you just feel like, I can't take it anymore. I've got everything coming at me, and I just can't take it. I feel like I've sinned, and I don't even know why I feel like I've sinned, but I, I, there isn't any kind of conviction that's there on my heart. 
but I just feel like everything is coming against me. And in that particular time when you've got everything piling down on you, you know, it's just common. We all do it. Our question is, Lord, have I done something? Have I done something? Do I need to ask for, for forgiveness for something? If I've done something, please let me know because I forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me because I don't want to spend an eternity in hell. I don't want to spend an eternity without you. I just want more of you, Lord. I just want more of you. And a lot of times that trouble comes so that the Lord can hear that love and that declaration that's coming out of your heart. Because you don't do that when you're not broken. You don't do that when you're not broken. There's a different kind of love that pours out of you when you're broken. There's a different kind of worship that pours out of you when you're broken. You lay it all at his feet. Every bit of it you lay at his feet. And in the midst of all of this, you know, we just want to stop. We just want to say, Lord, I can't take it. I can't take it anymore. But I am not going to turn my back on you. I know that this is hard. So I'm coming to you and I'm saying, hey, Lord, in this moment, you got to do whatever you need to do. If you need me to put something else on the altar, tell me what it is. Show me. Give me a sign. Let me know what needs to happen. But God, I can't take this part of this anymore. You're broken. You're broken. When you've had so much pain, it becomes easy to question God's kindness. Have you ever been there? Where you're like, Lord, I, I just don't even know why this is happening to me. Everybody else seems like they've got the victory. Everybody else seems like they're walking around with the perfect life. But for me, I feel broken. I feel like I can't be used. I feel like everything is coming, coming down on me. It hurts. Even when things are on the altar, you know, you, you put things on the altar and you want it to be like Abraham and Isaac. You know, how long did it take Abraham to put Isaac on that altar before the ram was provided? It was a suddenly for him. And sometimes we put things on the altar and we expect it to be a suddenly. And we have to wait through that time period of putting something on the altar. We put it on the altar and we lay it down and we sacrifice it and we say, Lord, it's yours. It's yours. But then when we don't get our suddenly right then, we say, okay, Lord, I sacrificed it. I sacrificed it. Why hasn't it happened yet? I want my ram right now. You know, Abraham was provided with a ram and I need mine right now because I've sacrificed it. Have you been there, church? Have you been there? I've been there. We want our promise. We want God to be our Jehovah Jireh. And we know that he already is. He is our provider. But when things don't happen instantly, we think, we begin to question, Lord, have I sinned? What have I done? Why is this taking so long? I need my suddenly right now. I prayed, I believed, I fasted, I've done everything that I know to do. I've laid it all down on the altar. I've given you my everything that I know to give you. Everything that I've got is on the altar. And I want my suddenly, I want my ram. Where's my healing? Where's my restoration? Where's my miracle? When is my loved one? going to be saved? When are my children going to come back home? When is it going to be my turn, Lord? When? When? So the Lord sent me here today to tell you something. You're looking for your circumstances to break. That's what you want. You're looking for your circumstances to break. But God said he's looking to break something in you. He's looking to break something in you at the altar. It's not about the experience. It's not about the promise that you have coming. But it's about you. It's about what he's doing in you and through you in that moment of surrender. I know you may be hurting. You may be broken. But hear me loud and clear. Hear me loud and clear. 
This is not the end. This is not your end. The Lord will have the final say. He will have the last word. Your God is a God of victory and he will reign victorious in your life. Your circumstances will break. But before your circumstances break, he is breaking something in you. God wants us to live above our feelings and our emotions. He wants us to live above what we have going on in the natural. He's trying to get us to that supernatural vision where we are soaring above the storm and we are like eagles. And we are above the storm looking down into the conflict. But we are soaring high in the supernatural, seeing what we can do in the supernatural, seeing how he can use us in the supernatural. We cannot be affected by what someone says or does to us all of the time. We have to fight things out in the spirit. We have to pray and believe. We have to seek the Lord for more. We have to know that God is doing something supernaturally. We are not going to back down. We're not going to give up. We are going to boldly declare that Christ is our soon coming king, that he is our warrior God, that he is a God of victory, and that he is going to supernaturally turn things around, that the promise is going to come walking through the door, and that promise is Jesus Christ because he is our soon coming king. And those circumstances will break when he breaks us. When he breaks us. God show me what has taken place in my spirit. God show me what you're breaking in me. Show me what you're breaking in me this morning. What does God want us to see things supernaturally? What is he trying to do? Why is he wanting us to see things supernaturally? Why does he want us to be uh, above the storm? Why does he want us to soar on eagle's wings above the storm? He wants us to do that so that we can be above the storm, so that we can see things supernaturally, so that we're not focused in on our temporary happiness, that we have an internal joy that resides in us, that our circumstances can't affect the fruit that is on our life. You know, in the word of God, there are fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, and we will know them by their fruit. We will know them by our fruit. So when you look at someone in your life, you will know a Christian by their fruit. What kind of fruit is in their life? If you're looking at a storm and everything is breaking out and love, joy, and peace, and long-suffering, and the other fruit that are there, if those aren't the things that you're seeing, you will know them by their fruit. What kind of fruit are you carrying this morning? What kind of fruit do you see in your life? We're no longer riding an emotional roller coaster asking Asking why, Lord, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? We trust the Lord and we know that in that moment he is perfecting us. He is taking us uh, higher. He is making us more like Christ. He is turning things around and he is giving us more glory. He is pouring out more anointing over our lives through the breaking. Instead of asking, why did this happen? To me, or instead of asking, why doesn't this happen for me? We need to be saying, Lord, we want your glory. I don't care about what, what I have coming towards me. I don't care about the promise. I want your glory. I want more of you. Lord, I'm just going to stay here at this altar until I get the glory, until I'm completely surrounded by your fire. I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of your glory. I want more of you. You can take it all, but give me you. Take it all. Take it all. I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything that I've got, but I've got to have your glory. I've got to have a relationship with you. I can't walk away from this altar because I've got to have a relationship with you this morning. His glory is not reserved for those who die. And go to heaven. It's not uh, restrained by time. There isn't a time limit on his glory. 
It's a supernatural thing that we all can have. We can be carriers of his glory. If we go through that process of refinement, if we go through that process of refinement where the Lord burns off all of the impurities, he has to burn through, and that burning comes through the fire of the altar. In the breaking of the altar, that's where it comes through. I hear the Lord say, I'm, I'm pulling glory out of you this morning. I'm pulling glory out of you this morning. In Acts 2, 1 through 5, in the Amplified, this is a very common uh, scripture that's quoted several times, especially in the Pentecostal church. And so I pulled it out of the Amplified this morning just to give us a little bit more detail. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them. And they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled. That is, diffused throughout their being. They were all filled. Diffused throughout their being with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, different languages, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. You know, the fire is the glory. When you're looking at the brazen altar, the fire is the glory. The glory is the fire. They are in interchangeable terms. Glory and fire are the exact same thing. Glory and fire are the same thing. The fire of the Holy Spirit and the glory that Moses experienced is the same thing. If you go back and you look at Exodus 24, 17 that I began to read to you, the sight of of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. The glory and the fire are the same thing. They are the exact same thing. We can experience that same glory today. We can experience that same glory today. When the fire of the Holy Spirit begins to descend, His glory appears. His glory appears. Glory is the very nature of God. Glory is the very nature of God. You know, when glory descends in a room, it will mess people up. Because people will do things that they've never done before. They might laugh uncontrollably. They might speak in tongues. They might lie on the floor, uh, just completely slain in the spirit. Um, they might not be able to talk. They might just sit there almost in a trance like just sitting there in with the glory of the Lord. You never know how the glory is going to fall on you because each time is different. But when the glory falls in that place, you know that it's the glory of God. Because when the glory falls on you, there is a peace like you have never known. The Holy Spirit comes in as a comforter. And you know all of those broken pieces that you've had that have been broken and you feel so distraught, and you feel so discouraged, and you feel so broken, and you feel so lonely, and you feel so discouraged. In that very moment, the Holy Spirit begins to pick up each piece and says, I know exactly where this one goes. Let me put this back. Let me get this one right here. And let me put this one back over here because I'm doing something right now. I'm going to send my glory down. But when I send my glory down, I'm putting you back better. And I'm putting you back stronger. And I'm not going to stop until I've got you back better, stronger, and more anointed. Because when I get this vessel completely pulled back together, I'm going to pour in some anointing. I'm going to pour in more and more and more anointing. Our God is a God of glory. That's his very nature. Our God is an all-consuming fire. He's an all-consuming fire in me, in you, at your work, in your body, in your careers, in your home, in your relationships, in your children's lives. He is an all-consuming fire. There is glory that will show up, and his glory is uh, not of God. The, the glory will show up and his glory 
what is not of is not of God, it will be removed. If it's not of God, sorry. When, when the glory of the Lord shows up, when the glory of the Lord shows up, what is not of God will be removed in that time. When the glory of the Lord shows up, what is not of God in your life will be removed. God will remove it by the fire. God will remove it by the fire. God's glory will remove every impurity in your life. When we have hope in the middle of our trials, when we have hope in the middle of the pressing, there is an expression of heaven that is being squeezed out of us. It's the tangible manifestation of God's glory. When we hope in the middle of our trials, when we hope in the middle of the pressing, instead of being discouraged, instead of talking to everybody you can talk to about your problems, when you have hope in the middle of those things and you say, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I trust you. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to have hope. I am going to know that you are doing something right now in, in this time. And I know that you're going to boldly do a supernatural work in my life. That there is a tangible manifestation of your glory showing up. And God manifests his goodness. He manifests his glory. And it, that glory carries immense weight. When the glory falls on you. When the glory falls on you. There's a heaviness that comes to that moment because there is such a heavy reverence that comes in. It's hard for you to stand under the true weight of the glory all the time. Because if you stood under it all the time, it would, it would be um, too heavy for us to carry. So that's why when you, have, when you are anointed, the anointing will be there for you to work in that anointing. And then it lifts. It lifts. It doesn't go away, but it lifts. Because if that glory stayed on you continuously, stayed on you continu continuously, it would wear us out in our flesh. Because we are still fleshly. We are still our flesh. Our enemies may think that they're breaking us. But they're actually being used to accomplish greater work in us. Our God is breaking things off of this world so that greater glory can come forth in you. The God is using your enemies to bring you greater glory. He's pulling glory out of you. His glory will outshine any losses. His glory will outshine any setbacks. A surpassing greatness is about to manifest and it's breaking and it's the breaking that opens the door. His greatness is about to manifest. And that breaking of the altar, that breaking of the altar, opens the door. Opens the door to his glory. In Zechariah 2, 5, again, the Lord himself shall be a wall of fire around us and guard the glory within Sounds like the brazen altar, an altar of sacrifice. There's wood, there's fire, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? The altar is a place of protection for us. When we build an altar, the Lord places a hedge of protection around us. There's a wall of fire around us. There's a wall of his glory around us. Nothing can penetrate the love of Christ. He is protecting us. He's keeping us. He is providing for us because he is our Jehovah Jireh. I want to look specifically this morning at Acts 3, Acts 2, 3 through 5. Going back to those verses that I read to you, I want to hone in on three things this morning. Verse 3, there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them and they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit and they were all filled filled that is diffused throughout their body with the Holy Spirit and began to speak and began to speak in other tongues different languages as the Spirit 
was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. The glory that comes through the breaking brings three things. So this morning, something has to break, but something has to break in us. And the reason why something has to break in us is because the Lord's trying to get us to this place where we can rest. Because we need rest. We need rest. We need rest. But he's got to get us to the altar so that we can find rest. He's got to get us to the altar so we can lay something down, so we can find rest. Finding the quietness of the Holy Spirit brings us rest. When we surrender it all at the altar, when we say, Lord, I'm giving it all to you, you can have it all. Take it all. Take it all. Have it. All of it. Take it all. In that moment when we sacrifice it all, there is a rest that comes on us. You know, you've been, you may have been saying, I'm so tired. I just can't find the time I need to rest. I just am so tired. I'm mentally drained. I'm physically drained. I am just so tired. I can't figure out why I am so tired. I can sleep and sleep and sleep, and I'm still tired. Lord, why am I so tired? Why am I so tired? It's because you're trying to do things in the natural. And he's saying, child, I'm trying to I'm trying to get you to rest. I'm trying to get you to let me do things supernaturally in your lives. But you want to continue to do it in the natural. So as long as you want to do it in the natural, have at it. Have at it. Because I'm going to let you do things naturally until you let me come in. Until you lay it all down at my feet. When you lay it all down at my feet, I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to run with it. And you're going to get so much further ahead, you, you won't even realize how far I've taken you. That's how far you're going to be. You are going to supernaturally grow, supernaturally expand, supernaturally take off. But you've got to rest first. You've got to lay it down at my feet so that I can pick it up supernaturally. Finding the quietness of the Holy Spirit, you enter into praise. You enter into praise. And once you start praising the Lord, then that worship shows up where you just say, Lord, you can have it. You can have it all. I just want you. I just want you. And when the Lord hears that, when the Lord hears, that's all I want. I just want you. I just want you, Lord. That's when the glory comes down. Right there in that moment. That's when the glory comes down. He says, okay, child. Since you just want me, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to give you more anointing. I'm going to give you the desires of my heart. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. Because you know what we're doing. When we say, Lord, I just want you, we're delighting in him. We're delighting in him. We're delighting in him. And it's scriptural. When we delight in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. He gives us those desires because we've told him that he's our everything. He's our everything. And not only is he our everything in that time, he gives us, lets us experience his glory in new and mighty and significant ways. <laughs> I've got to find my rest because I want the glory. I've got to find my rest because I want his glory. The second thing I want to bring out of that scripture is that we will be filled to overflowing. We will be filled to overflowing capacity. When we're filled, we're filled to overflowing. We're not just a little full. We're not just a little full. We are filled to overflowing. To flood. To overflow means to flood. It means to fill to the brim and have extra. It means more than enough. It means more than enough. When we lay everything down at the altar, the Lord is saying, in, in that time when I send my glory, I am going to fill you to overflow. Not only am I going to give you anointing, not only am I going to give you my glory, but I'm going to overflow it. You will have more than enough. 
You're not going to have just a little bit. You're going to have more than enough. You're going to have everything that you can physically and spiritually carry in that, in, that, in that time plus extra. I'm giving you extra. You will be filled to overflow. You will be filled to overflow. You will have more than enough. The third thing that I want you to see where it says they began to speak. They began to speak. They were bold. They were bold. There's a boldness and there's a power that comes when you set everything down at the altar. There is a boldness and a power that comes when you set everything down at the altar and you say, God, I surrender it all to you. There is a boldness and a power that comes and there is a peace that comes through the rest, through the filling. When you know that God is using you, you can speak and you know that the Holy Spirit is using your words for ministry. You can become bold. You can become bold. When you know that the Lord is on your side and that it is Him working through you, you can become bold. I will tell you that over the last few months as I have started praying and fasting and just asking the Lord to do a work in me, that there is a boldness that has come. There are things that I have done that a year ago I would not have ever thought that I would have done. But there is a boldness that will come on you. You will have the authority and the power to walk into places and to speak things over people that you never thought that you would ever be able to do. But it's not you doing it. It is the Holy Spirit using you. It's the Holy Spirit working through you. And that boldness comes from the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. You trust who he is and what he's doing through you. That boldness comes. That boldness with power and authority comes because you have set everything down at the altar and you are walking in a new level of anointing and you're walking through a new level of glory and you're walking through a new level of boldness. You know that what is happening is bigger than you. It's about his glory. It's about his glory. Today, I want to encourage you. Today, I want to encourage you. You are looking for your circumstances to break. If you are looking for your circumstances to break, God is saying today, I want to break something in you. I want to break something in you. The waiting that's taking place has a purpose. It's to bring you my glory I'm trying to get you everything that you need for what's ahead. I'm trying to get you everything, but I've got to have everything from you. I've got to have everything from you. I, I need the fire in your life. I need the glory in your life. If I can get you to chase after my glory, you'll find rest. If I can get you to chase after my glory, you'll be filled to overflow. If I can get you to chase after my glory, you'll be bold. If I can get you to chase after my glory, you'll be fierce. If I can get you to chase after my glory, you'll have the power and authority that you need to accomplish everything that I've called you to do. And you will set out boldly to accomplish it. Something's got to break. Something's got to break, but it's got to break in you. Would you stand? Would you stand, church? If anyone wants prayer, you can come forward. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in this moment. Because I know that you're doing something great and mighty. And I know that in this house we are few in number because we have so many physical needs um, in this place right now. 
and I know that you're doing something, you're providing healing for everybody who needs it. But I also know that you're doing something, even through this service right now. I do want to uh, give a basic salvation, a uh, call for salvation. I know everybody here, I know you all very well. But I do feel like the Holy Spirit wanted me to say. In order to be saved, it's so easy. So very easy. But at the same time, a lot of times, it can be so easy that it's hard. Because you feel like there's so much change that's going to take place. There's so much change that's going to take place. And you're like, Lord, I can't do all of that. I can't be perfect. But God doesn't want anybody to be perfect. He just wants you to try. He just wants you to serve him. He just wants you to love him, to follow him. He never asks you to be perfect. And if you think that there are perfect Christians, you are sadly mistaken because there are no perfect Christians. There are no perfect Christians. We are all saved by his grace. We are all saved by his grace. So today, if you want to dedicate your life to the Lord, all you have to do is admit that you sin. It's the easy part. Admit that you sin. Lord, I've sinned. I've fallen short. I know that I've sinned. You might even want to call out certain sins that you've done. Just say, Lord, I'll put them all under your blood. Because I know that your blood washed me. It redeemed me. It saved me. That day on that cross, that day that you laid it all down for me, you gave me everything that day. Now, I want to give you everything. I want to give you my heart. Lord, I admit that I've sinned. I know, I believe that you are the risen Christ. I know that you came to this earth. I know that you died on the cross. And I know that you died on the cross for my sins. The last step is just confessing him. Lord, you are my risen king. I know, I know, I know, I know that you are my soon coming king, that I am saved, I am washed by the blood of Christ. And if you can pray that prayer, then my friend, you are a Christian. You are a Christian, and I encourage you to tell somebody about it today. I encourage you to tell somebody about it today. I want to pray a prayer in the house. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the anointing and your glory that fell in this place, Lord. And I know that you are doing a work in people. I know that you are creating a way for people. Lord, I pray today that even in the breaking, Lord, that we are not looking at our circumstances, but Lord, we are looking to you. Take us into a greater uh, level of praise. Take us into a greater level of worship and send your glory down. Lord, we want you. We don't want anything else but you. We need your glory. We want, we want the presence and the experience of the altar, Lord. We surrender it all at your feet. Every bit of it is surrendered to you today. And we declare and decree that that breakthrough, that that breaking is coming and that in that moment of glory that the Holy Spirit is coming in and he is putting us back together again. He is putting us back together again so that we can be a carrier of your glory, so that we can be a carrier of your light. And Lord, we declare and decree that the power and the authority that is falling on us now will be used of you in great and mighty ways. Let that light and let that glory go forth in boldness out of this house, Lord. Help us to open the doors for us to walk into places of government. Open the doors for us to walk into places on our jobs. Open the doors for us to walk into places in the community and let your light shine. Let that glory come down in that place and let that darkness completely flee. Lord, we, and we declare and decree that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is completely encamping all around us. That your fire, that your presence will completely surround us. And that glory will engulf not only our hearts and our lives, but we will carry it through. And we will be filled to overflowing. We will be filled to overflowing. 
And we declare today that there is a new level of boldness. There is a new level of power. There is a new level of authority that is going to encamp around about us. And that our lives will be seen as, we will be seen as a Christ carrier. We will be seen as a glory carrier. Friends and family and people from the community are going to start coming up to us saying, will you pray for me? They're going to start saying, you know, the Lord hasn't told me. The, the Lord just uh, placed you on my heart. I just wanted to call you today because I feel like you have a word for me. I feel like that you might be able to get a prayer through for me. And Lord, that's what we are going to do in this house. We are going to boldly walk through any door that you open. So send them all. Send them all one by one to us, Lord. We declare and decree that open doors are coming and that your people are coming in because we are carriers of your glory. Send your glory down. Jesus, send your glory down. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we say amen. 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 amen.